Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, it's been quite a while since the last little episode of my Thoughts On series for Star Trek Discovery. Long story short, I had a lot of work to do, got a little discouraged. I actually started recording this specific episode review uh, quite a while ago, but I remember the moment I started recording, my cat started screaming for some reason, and everyone decided to start doing their, their yard work. So I was like, oh, I'll just do it later, and then I ended up never doing it. But I'm here now for all three of you that are interested in my thoughts on an episode-by-episode -episode basis. Uh, without further ado, let's talk about this. This particular episode opens up with number one, beaming aboard the Discovery. I like the look of the actress, and I like what little we see of her in this role. In Gene Roddenberry's original pilot, Number one was kind of cold, very logical by design, and that's very much not what we see here. Number one is very warm with her interactions with Pike, and I kind of like this change because although I don't have any proof of this, my big takeaway is that some of number one's character was recycled into fleshing out Spock. Again, I don't know if that's true, that's just what I've always thought. Because, you know, Spock is somewhat of a different character in the cage than what we see later on. You know, there's the infamous smile. And to have number one be very cold and logical would just feel redundant with a world with Spock the way he is. Number one tells Pike that there's something shady going on with Spock's murder accusations. So it's quite possible he didn't do it. There's a throwaway line about the Enterprise removing the holographic communication systems, and it just seems like a lazy attempt to explain why they don't have them in TOS. It's kind of dumb because DS9 had holographic communication systems, and they treated it like it was something new. So you're not really fixing canon at this point. Look, I accept the discovery looks different. I'm not hung up on the fact that the tech is wrong for the time. But lines like this just remind me of it. I get it, there's a complicated copyright issue with Star Trek and you have to make things somewhat visually different. I've moved on. You should too, Discovery. And that's all we really get of number one. I'm a little disappointed with how little screen time she got. And from what I understand, she's only going to be in one more episode besides this. So it's disappointing. I really liked what we saw of her. There's part of me that wishes we got another Star Trek show with this version of Pike, this version of uh, number one, and, and even uh, even Saru. Just those three characters, that's all I really want. From there we go to Stamets and Tilly having a conversation about the parasite they pulled out of her in the previous episode. And I know I've been giving Stamets a hard time so far, but his performance, for the first time so far, he actually looks like he's trying to act. I'm not sure what was going on before. And as much as I dislike Tilly, there's a good character moment with her here. Before the briefing, it's established that Saru is not feeling so good. So if you ever watched TV before, you know he's probably going to have some sort of risk of dying at some point in the episode. Also, the Gorn looking guy is named Linus. Just thought I'd point that out. Spike uses the information brought to him by number one to find Spock's ship, and he plans... An intercept course. Burnham doesn't want to see Spock anymore. And you know that she's just going to change her mind later in the episode. They're pulled out of warp by a big ball. And this big ball is both inorganic and organic. And it's ancient and possibly very intelligent. This feels very Star Trek. I like it. Just then, the universal communication system malfunctions, and everyone can't read the computers or can't understand each other. It's very much in the style of uh, the Tower of Babel. This is a really cool idea, and I think I could have made an entire episode on its own, but the problem is fixed almost as fast as it arises, thanks to Saru and the fact that he knows like 96 languages. It's taken care of remarkably fast, unfortunately. That comedian I don't find very funny, from the first episode, returns, and she says more things that the actress obviously doesn't understand. They say this role was written specifically for her, and I can't imagine how, because she just is so unconvincing with everything she says. Oh yeah, and surprise, surprise, Saru is dying. After the universal communication system is fixed, the power surge shoots through the ship, causing Tilly's parasite to escape and reattach itself to her. The ship's issues are the result of that glowing orb pulling them out of warp. It's eventually revealed that the orb is trying to give Discovery all of what it's learned over its lifetime before it eventually dies. There's so much info that it's overloading Discovery's mainframe or motherboard or whatever. 
Midway through the episode, it's revealed that the orb is trying to talk to them, and they're like, why didn't we think of this before? But really, why wouldn't that be their first thought? I, I don't know. It just feels weird. It feels like that'd be the first thing they'd check. Because the orb is dying, Saru is also dying because he's empathic. Uh, okay. There's supposed to be this heartfelt moment between Saru and Michael, and it just doesn't work because they haven't had a moment like this in the series before. I've never felt like these two liked each other, even in the first episode when they're supposed to be, you know, kind of cool with one another. There's a line about her saying that Saru is her family, and it just doesn't work for me. It feels very out of place. There's a really tone-deaf moment where Stamets drills a hole in Tilly's head while singing her her favorite song to attach some sort of communication thing so they can talk to the parasite. It, it's, it's bizarre. The parasite tells Stamets that Discovery's jumps are killing her species and her ecosystem. The ore blows up once Discovery has all of its memories. As its last act, it saves the ship from destruction. The conclusion to Saru's subplot is that he wasn't dying. He was actually entering the next stage of his species evolution. This is illustrated by his gangula falling off. It's kind of a weird scene. Michael changes her mind about seeing Spock again to the surprise of no one. The episode's left on a cliffhanger with Tilly being taken to the Upside Down. I feel like there was a little too much going on in this episode. Like, there was a lot that could have been... Like, there was a lot that could have been made into episodes on their own, but here it just feels jumbled together. The most interesting stuff was with the orb, and the stuff with Tilly was okay. Stamets was a little better. Tilly was annoying, but the comedian is just awful. I, I really takes me out of the episodes when she's on the screen. The worst subplot was about Saru, just because the conclusions involving his and Michael's relationship just feel undeserved. I liked things about the episode, but as a whole, it just felt, you know, jumbled together. I would have very much liked to have seen an episode based on some of the individual things that happened in it, but they're just, they just come and go, and it, I don't know, it wasn't great. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't great. Yeah, so that's it for now. I will see you next time whenever I upload that video. Hopefully not in a couple of months, but uh, I'll talk to you then. Bye.